In March of 1966, a wave of UFO sightings across southeast Michigan aroused media interest, bringing the perennial issue of the UFO back to popular attention. Controversy arose when the Air Force's scientific consultant concluded that at least some of the sightings were the result of swamp gas, an explanation summarily rejected by witnesses and other state citizens. The ensuing public outcry was instrumental in bringing about the scientific study of unidentified flying objects, the only academic assessment of the topic completed to date, and the last attempt on the part of the U.S. Air Force to settle the unrelenting mystery of the UFO. The anomalous lights over Michigan were first observed by residents of Washtenaw and neighboring counties on the night of March 14-15, 1966. There were over a hundred witnesses, including dozens of University of Michigan students who watched a football-shaped object drift through campus, the airport, and a nearby swamp. At least seven police officers in Washtenaw, Livingston, and Monroe County chased multiple glowing objects for roughly two and a half hours, watching as they arranged themselves in patterns in the sky and performed extraordinary aerial maneuvers. On March 17th to 18th, two Washtenaw Sheriff deputies spotted similar objects near the small city of Milan. Six days later, a farmer by the name of Frank Manor had an unusual sighting from his farm in Dexter, Michigan. Manor watched a reddish glowing point of light streak down from the sky on a 45 degree angle and come to a stop around treetop level over top of a swampy patch of ground at the back of his farm. At this point, a blue and white light appeared on the object. Manor and his 18 year old son, Ronald, walked out to where the object had stopped in order to get a closer look. They stopped within 500 yards and puzzled over what they were seeing. They said that the object was brown with a quilted pattern on its surface. It was in the shape of a pyramid with little lights on either side. The lights emitted a bluish green color that occasionally turned red. Manor also noted what appeared to be a porthole on the top of the object. The entire structure was about the size of a car and had a hazy mist lingering in the air beneath it. It rose and fell in altitude, changing colors in the process, but it never completely touched ground. It emitted a high-frequency ringing noise that was variously likened to a siren or a bullet's ricochet by those who heard it. As the pair stood staring in disbelief, the object ascended in altitude, passed over top of their heads, and disappeared from sight. Manor called the police, and two officers were able to arrive on time to hear the ringing noise and witness a faraway light that dimmed in brightness as they approached. Not long after, an officer Robert Hunnewill of the Dexter Village Police Department spotted what appeared to be the same object. The Washtenaw County Sheriff ordered all available officers to the scene of the encounter. Six patrol cars arrived and were able to chase the object for a few minutes before it again disappeared from sight. Again the following night, dozens of residents at a female dormitory at Hillsdale College, some 40 to 50 miles from Manor's farm, saw faint lights drifting around in a nearby marsh. After mysterious lights were once again spotted in the area on the night of March 22nd, the media pushed the story of the Michigan sightings to the headlines. Reluctantly, the Air Force sent Project Blue Book scientific consultant, J. Allen Hynek, to conduct an investigation. Hynek later claimed that his superiors expected him to produce a mundane explanation in order to pacify the angry citizens of Michigan, a situation he likened to attempting to pull a chestnut out of the fire for the Air Force. Under immense pressure from senior Air Force officials and local journalists, Hynek interrupted his investigation after less than three hours in order to give a public statement. He announced his tentative conclusions to a packed house at the Detroit Press Club on March 26th. At least some of the Hillsdale College sightings from the night of March 22nd, he claimed, could be attributed to flashes of burning swamp gas, a phenomenon long observed over marshy ground. Although he admitted that the swamp gas theory could not account for all sightings reported in Michigan over the past two weeks, the press largely ignored his qualification and presented his findings as laughably inadequate. The media reaction to Hynek's announcements at the Detroit Press Club exacerbated the public's frustration with the U.S. Air Force's apparent lack of interest in the Michigan sightings. Hynek, the Air Force, and the entire state of Michigan were widely ridiculed in the media. The state suffered so much embarrassment that congressman and soon-to-be president, Gerald Ford, stepped up in its defense and demanded a better explanation for the UFO enigma. The result was a hearing by the House Armed Services Committee, held on April 5th of the same year. Hynek was invited to participate, and he took the opportunity to distance himself from the Air Force's official stance on the UFO question. After years of downplaying its importance in public appearances, 
Hynek declared some of the UFO data to be worthy of scientific investigation, and advocated for the creation of an independent panel of physical and social scientists to review the cases he'd helped to collect. Sensing that the public was losing confidence in Project Blue Book, the Air Force agreed to share some of its data with a committee chaired by the esteemed nuclear physicist Dr. Edward Condon of the University of Colorado Boulder. The committee's final report, released in January 1969, contained statements discouraging further research and casting doubt on the then-popular extraterrestrial hypothesis. Although it was harshly criticized by most UFO researchers, the report was well received in academia, where the UFO question remains largely ignored. While the media had long pushed the UFO question to the margins of public discourse, the Michigan sightings aroused enough excitement to warrant bringing flying saucers back to the front page. However, after the Colorado study produced negative conclusions on the scientific value of UFO research, a ruling that prompted the Air Force to close Project Blue Book in December 1969, UFOs would never again achieve the same level of prominence. It was the last time that UFOs were regarded as anything close to a public problem, and the last time that UFO witnesses could expect any interest from the mainstream media. Are you sorry now that you did tell people what you saw? Yes, I am. I am, I am sorry, because it, 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 not that, that, that it's not the truth, but it's just the idea, the reaction of the people. They think you're a, a nut tell you the truth that's just what they figure you are and I'm not going to take it no more I don't want nobody down in here I, I just leave me alone and if, and if the thing lands right there and right there by that pump I'd never say a word